Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From lost ancient fortresses full of history to amazing secrets of ancient civilizations and even some cute cats on Everest, here are some amazing discoveries made in the mountains. Let's jump right in. Masada. Masada is without a doubt one of the most incredible mountain fortresses in the world. While looking at aerial photographs of this place, it's baffling to think that anyone ever had an idea to build a stronghold here, but they did, and parts of it are still standing. Masada towers over the edge of the Judean desert, its walls barely standing above cliffs made of chalk and dolomite that tremble into the Dead Sea below. The fortress stands about 1,300 feet above the ground. Because this is the desert, a harsh and inhospitable wasteland, the whole place is uninhabited. The surrounding area is undeveloped too, making visitors really feel like they've stepped into the Old Testament. Who is the crazy person who decided to build a stone fortress on a rocky mesa? If you've read the Bible, you probably already know the answer. Masada was built by King Herod the Great, ruler of Judea between 37 and 4 BC. It was constructed to be his personal castle complex. After Herod's death, the Romans invaded Judea. They recognized the strategic importance of Masada and transformed it into a garrison. In 66 AD, the subjugated Jews of Judea revolted against their Roman masters. A group of Jewish people called the Sicarii took over Masada, but only briefly. Their leader, Menahem, was murdered. Four years later, the fury of the Romans came down upon the Jewish rebels with extreme prejudice. Jerusalem was torn to pieces, broken down, and set aflame. While Jerusalem burned, the Romans turned their attention to the rebels still hiding in the fortress of Masada. Historical records show that 8,000 Romans surrounded Masada, which was only held by around 100 rebels. It was also being used as a place of safety for many women and children. What happened next was a massacre. On April 15th, 73 AD, the Romans completed a ramp that would allow them to climb over the fortress walls and slay the rebels, and that was exactly what they did. Only two women and five children survived, and only because they hid in the cisterns. Everyone else was killed. After that, Masada remained empty. It wouldn't be for about 500 years until a group of monks began living in its ruins, using the place as a monastery. Then, 200 years later, when Islam came, Masada was abandoned for good. The Everest Cat This is the Palace Cat, one of the most unusual felines in the world. Just by looking at the unimpressed expression on its face, can you guess where it lives? Its puffy ears and leopard-like spots are a dead giveaway that it's a high-altitude kitty. But what you wouldn't expect is that this grumpy cat lives on the highest mountain in the world. The very first recorded sighting of a palace cat has been made on Everest. In 2019, Dr. Tracy Saman and a group of scientists with the Zoological Health Program at the Bronx Zoo collected environmental samples from over 16,000 feet. On the southern flank of Mount Everest, the team investigated two specific sites separated by 3.7 miles. What they found after four weeks of hard work was evidence of the palace's cat dwelling nearly halfway up the mountain. It turns out Mount Everest has a much richer biodiversity than previously known. The feisty feline isn't alone up in the snow and ice. The cat has plenty of food to eat in the form of the mountain weasel. There are all kinds of mammals that scientists never realize live in the rocky nooks of Everest. It makes sense though why nobody knew about the cat or the weasels. Most people just tried not to die while climbing to the top. If you've never heard of the palace's cat before, you're not alone. It's one of the rarer species of cat that most people aren't familiar with. Science didn't even know it existed until 1776. A researcher came across one near Russia's Lake Baikal for the first time. Since then, they've been spotted in Central Asia, in the Himalayas, and Siberia's mountain ranges. These wild cats are incredibly well camouflaged and suited to living in cold climates. And in case you're wondering, you absolutely cannot buy any of these cats. And in case you were wondering, you absolutely cannot buy one of these cats. They are wild animals and a protected species. Though they aren't considered anywhere close to going extinct, seeing as they are kept in over 60 zoos across the world, we still have to be careful. The Lion Fortress there is another spectacular mountain fortress very similar to Masada. 
and with an equally brutal story. But this one is located on the island nation of Sri Lanka. It's called Sigiriya, or the Lion Fortress. It was built in the 5th century on top of a gigantic slab of rock. The only way to reach the top is by climbing an ancient staircase carved into the bedrock. The staircase begins at the ground level, its entrance between a humongous pair of carved lion paws. Much like how Masada was built by a diabolical ruler, so too was Sigiriya the brainchild of an eccentric king. King Kashyapa I seized the throne from his father in 477. His father was King Datusena of the Sinhalese people. The Sinhalese origin story is going to force me on a bit of a tangent here, so get ready! According to Sri Lankan legend, an Indian prince named Vijaya was the grandson of a lion. Vijaya traveled to Sri Lanka and married Princess Kuveni. From them came the Sinhalese, also known as the Lion People. King Datusena was supposedly one of the legendary couple's descendants. So, in 477, Kashyapa I stole the throne. He was the son of a non-royal consort, making him an illegitimate ruler. The rightful heir was his half-brother, Mogalana. Fearing for his life after Kashyapa's treachery, Mogalana fled to India. But Kashyapa was afraid as well. He thought his brother would come back with an army and try to retake the capital of Anuradhapura. To protect himself and his new empire, he moved the capital to Sigiriya. King Kashyapa had an epic fortress built at the top of the rock. The rock expanded to be a city in the sky. It had defensive structures to protect it from Mogalana. It also had palaces, gardens, and houses. As a side note, the mountainous rock was already inhabited much earlier. Archaeologists have found evidence of prehistoric rock shelters around Sigiriya from upwards of 5,000 years ago in the Mesolithic period. In the end, the very thing that Kashyapa feared would happen did happen. In 495, his half-brother arrived with overwhelming force and took back the throne. It was an epic battle waged at the summit of Sigiriya. Even with his castle in the sky, Kashyapa was no match for the rightful heir to the kingdom. Kashyapa was killed during the battle. Some say he fell on his sword after his army abandoned him midway through the fighting. Others say he was flung from the top of the rock. Either way, he was dead, and Mogalana was victorious. The new king returned to the old capital of Anuradhapura. Sigiriya's fortress was then turned into a Buddhist monastery. The monastery was active until around the 12th century, when Sinhalese control over Sri Lanka started to decline. By the 1500s, Sri Lanka had become a victim of European expansion. The Portuguese laid claim to the island, but they were displaced by the British in the 1700s. British mountaineers didn't rediscover Lion Fortress until 1851. And now for a quick break, but first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a huge thank you to Nice Barrington and Angie Byers for supporting this channel. Thanks so much for watching and spending time with us. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. El Teposteco. Moving from the cold peaks of the world's tallest mountain, I take you to the Mexican rainforest. To a mountain rising above the jungle that holds one of the greatest pyramids you've never heard of. The pyramid is called El Teposteco. In the days of the Aztec Empire, it was one of the most important temples in the Mesoamerican world. Archaeologists believe it was considered an extremely holy site, kind of like an Aztec version of the Vatican. Pilgrims from the Maya Empire as far away as Guatemala made journeys to see it. People trekked for weeks through the dense jungle just to worship at this temple. The temple was built way up the slope of Sierra de Tepoztlan, overlooking the ancient town of the same name. The history here is a little murky, but researchers believe the temple was the epicenter of a bizarre cult that spread throughout Mexico. The cult worshipped the god of alcohol. El Teposteco was built in honor of Tepostecatl, Aztec god of pulque. Pulque was an alcoholic drink made from fermented sap. It's still consumed in Mexico to this day and can be found just about anywhere. It's the dark white color of stale milk and has a consistency like yeast. Pulque isn't exactly that popular anymore. It fell out of favor in the 20th century with the rise of beer and the flood of European immigrants to the country. 
but there is an ongoing push to revive the popularity of pulque, especially among tourists. If you ever have the opportunity, give it a try. You'll be drinking the same stuff the Aztec did. Getting back to the temple, it's a typical pyramid-shaped temple common in Mexico. This structure is largely ruined, with its great staircase dangerous to try and climb. But its walls are still mostly intact. Plus, you can see the dwellings where the Aztec priest lived at the beginning of the 16th century. The Busegi Mountains In 2003, a top-secret Romanian intelligence service supposedly made a discovery that could change history. This discovery is dubious simply because there are not many legitimate sources discussing it. But hear me out. The discovery was made in Romania's Busegi Mountains, which belong to the much larger Carpathian mountain range that stretches across six countries in Europe. It's here where a large stone sphinx looks out over the primeval countryside. Scientists say the sphinx, perched at one of the mountain's peaks, was shaped by countless years of wind and rain but many believe it was carved by human hands, or more specifically, by the hands of an unknown culture that tried to mimic Egypt's Great Sphinx. The truth of this strange eroded formation is unknown. Most experts say it's just a conspiracy theory, but supposedly the Romanian government discovered a mysterious hollow space underneath the mountain directly below where the Sphinx is. This isn't official, it's only a rumor. And for that reason, I can't tell you how the Romanian scientists discovered it. I can only say that there is supposedly a huge empty dome within the mountain, almost as if the mountain were hollow. What's even more interesting is that the mysterious empty space in the mountain could be connected to an ancient legend. The ancient Romanians, known as the Dacians, told stories of a god who lived in the mountain. The god's name was Zamolxis. Could the god, the empty space, and the eroded sphinx all be connected? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. A mystery animal in Arizona. Something unusual was sighted recently in the Phoenix Mountains Preserve. A video was posted online of what appeared to be a very dangerous animal lurking outside a home in the mountain range. Thousands of people from the local area watched the video in horror. Many guessed it was a jaguar, a panther, or a jaguarundi but nobody knows for sure what it was. Take a look at this footage and tell me what kind of animal is moving along this steep rock wall. Even experts with the Arizona Game and Fish Department were confused as to what beast was videoed outside the home. There appears to be some sort of four-legged predator skulking the mountains outside Phoenix. Department spokesperson Tom Cadden told the Arizona Republic that the animal was way too big to be a house cat. It was too big to be a local native species as well, meaning it was bigger than a mountain lion, jaguar, ocelot, or bobcat. Tom suggested it could have been an exotic cat that someone had in their house, but it escaped. The video was taken about a month before the holiday season in 2023. Nothing about the mysterious animal has been reported again, so nobody knows where it went or what happened to it. Maybe it was a melanistic mountain lion, like an albino, except backwards. It's rare and unlikely, but not impossible. The creature may have also been a humongous panther from the jungle that was recaptured by its owner. Ancient Jellyfish Scientists have announced the discovery of what they claim is the oldest species of swimming jellyfish ever. On a Canadian mountain, researchers excavated specimens of jellyfish from 505 million years ago. These creatures prowled the oceans half a billion years before human beings even evolved. The new species of jellyfish has a long and ridiculous name that's tough to pronounce, but I'll try. It's called Burgesso medusa phasmiformis, named after the Burgess shale deposit where it was discovered. It wasn't a particularly large jellyfish, with its bell-shaped body just over seven inches tall. Despite its stature, it was a ferocious creature, the jellyfish had 90 tentacles that it used to capture prey and stuff its face with yummy sea creatures. If you're a big jellyfish fan, you might know that jellyfish bodies are 95% water. Because of this, jellyfish don't typically fossilize. It's like trying to fossilize a water balloon. It just doesn't make any sense. That's why finding such an ancient specimen is such a big deal. Normally, when they die, jellyfish decay. 
Scientists typically study ancient jellyfish by looking at microscopic fossilized larval stages. Dr. Jean-Bernard Caron from the Royal Ontario Museum said the delicate specimens were recovered in rocky layers at the top of mountains in the Burgess Shale. If you're wondering why there were jellyfish on mountains, it's because these mountains were once underwater. After millions of years of tectonic changes, oceans filling and then drying, the jellyfish fossils remained perfectly preserved in stone. The Bridge of Immortals In China's Anhui province, there is a mountain range called Huangshan. It means Yellow Mountain in English. Locals know it as the most beautiful mountain in China, renowned across the country for its jaw-dropping scenery. But the mountain isn't just home to natural beauty. It's also famous for the Bridge of the Immortals, believed to be the highest bridge in the world. Huangshan has held an important place in Chinese folklore for over a thousand years. There is a legend from 747 AD that claims the mountain was home to the elixir of immortality. Hermits used to flock to the isolated caverns and sparse forests of the Rocky Mountain Range to seek eternal life. Poets and artists retreated into the mountain to find inspiration, becoming one with nature. In the 16th century, modern painters took a huge interest in Huangshan. Paintings started finding their way around the world, turning the mountain into a mythical paradise. People in Europe saw the mountain as a kind of fairy tale landscape from a world totally unlike their own. There are too many amazing sights on the mountain to recount them all, but there are incredible rock formations, ancient trees over a thousand years old, and clouds that can move like a misty ocean through the deep valleys. There are hot springs too. One legend claims Chinese Emperor Huang Di bathed in the springs for 49 days and became immortal, then ascended to heaven. But what about the Bridge of Immortals? The bridge connects two tunnels that were carved by hand through two separate mountains. The bridge is made from stone carved with beautiful images. Out of everywhere in the world, it's one of the most spectacular views a person can have in their lifetime. But the bridge is not particularly ancient, nor does it make you immortal. It was built in 1987. Noah's Ark God is a particularly fickle critic of himself. After he created human beings, they proved so troublesome that he got rid of them with a flood. According to the Bible, only Noah and his family and one pair of each living animal survived the global deluge in a wooden boat. For scientists, the religious text is a myth to represent something a little less dramatic that happened in real life. In other words, it's a story. But for those who accept the Bible as irrefutable truth, Noah was a real person who did fill an ark with two members of every species while the rest of the world drowned. For those who believe the tale, they think the ark is still in this world, and they know where it is. The Bible says when the flood waters receded, Noah's ark came to rest somewhere on the slope of Mount Ararat in Armenia and Turkey. The mountain is so big, it's in both countries. People have been climbing the mountain for years, hoping to find some piece of the legendary ship. People like British attorney James Bryce in 1876. James said he found a piece of wood that definitely came from Noah's Ark. Others have made similar claims in the years since. In the 1940s, an optometrist claimed he saw a piece of the Ark fossilized in a rock formation. In the 2000s, a group of evangelical pastors said they found petrified wood on the peak of the mountain. Academic archaeologists say that searching for any piece of the Ark is like trying to find a needle in a haystack that doesn't exist. National Geographic explorer Jody Magnus says no legitimate archaeologist has ever gone in search of the Ark. Mainstream science doesn't think it is ever going to be found. And unfortunately, no confirmed piece of the Ark has been found. But what if scientists are wrong? Stories of a great destructive flood have been with human civilization long before the writing of the Bible. Even before the 8th century BC, when someone sat down to write the Old Testament, there were legends of a great flood. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, written in Mesopotamia 4,000 years ago, there is mention of a global flood. And there's even a man in the story who survives the flood using an ark. 
archaeologists recently found a cuneiform tablet from 1750 BC describing exactly how that very ark was built. Another explorer with National Geographic named Eric Klein, a professional archaeologist at George Washington University, says a flood did likely happen 7,500 years ago. There was likely a flood big enough to influence civilizations around the world, but whether Noah's Ark will be discovered on Mount Ararat, only time will tell. Even believers are a little doubtful. Andrew A. Snelling, a geologist who has been trying to prove that Earth is only 10,000 years old, doesn't think the Ark will be found. He said there is little chance its wooden structure hasn't completely decayed already. What do you think? Do you think we'll find the Ark? Let me know in the comments below. The Mountain on the Moon Not everybody gets to have a mountain on the moon named after them, but American mathematician Melba Roy Mouton does. The International Astronomical Union has named a humongous lunar mountain after the scientist. The mountain is 20,000 feet tall, rising like a giant pale spike from the surface of the moon. Melba spent 14 years at NASA. She was one of the scientists who helped land a man on the moon in July 1969. NASA celebrates her as one of the pioneering leaders of the space agency. She began her career at NASA in 1959 as the head mathematician at the Goddard Space Flight Center. It was her team that oversaw some of the first satellites launched into orbit, Echo 1 and Echo 2, in the early 1960s. Melba retired shortly after the successful moon landing in 69. She lived until the age of 61 and died of brain cancer in 1990. To honor the amazing contributions she made, there is now a mountain on the moon named Mons Mouton. The name was proposed by members of NASA's Viper mission. Viper standing for Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. It's the upcoming mission to map resources beyond Earth. The rover will be landing near the Nobile Crater, not far from Mons Mouton, in late 2024 to scan for resources. Mount Fuji a team of researchers from the University of Tokyo have made an explosive discovery about Japan's most famous mountain. It turns out Mount Fuji may have erupted more frequently in the past than scientists realized. Professor Yusuke Yokoyama says it's an important discovery because it could help prevent a disaster in the future. The team of scientists discovered that between 5,000 and 3,900 years ago, there were six major eruptions. They learned this by studying layers of volcanic ash found in Lake Yamanaka near Mount Fuji. The researchers collected 8,000 years worth of sediment from the bottom of the lake and studied 29 individual layers. They also dug a hole about 60 feet deep beside the lake and studied the layers of dirt. It took the best technology at their disposal to properly date and analyze the layers. But soon, all of that hard work paid off. The scientists were shocked to find Mount Fuji erupts way more than they thought. To give you some context, Mount Fuji has been quietly sleeping since 1707. But don't let that fool you. Japan's great mountain is capable of erupting at literally any second. And now, thanks to this study, researchers know that Mount Fuji can erupt six times in a thousand years. What do you think would happen if Mount Fuji erupted right now? Would it be an apocalyptic level event like if Yellowstone suddenly blew its top? To understand the threat, let me take you back 300 years. On December 16, 1707, Mount Fuji erupted. The eruption ejected several tons of solid volcanic material into the atmosphere. This volcanic material blanketed the city of Edo, over which the modern city of Tokyo was built. It was likely triggered by an 8.6 magnitude earthquake that rocked Japan right before the eruption. It wasn't a biblical event. People did die, but the world didn't descend into anarchy. The fallout from the volcano damaged agriculture in the region, causing people around Fuji to starve to death. If the eruption was caused by an earthquake, imagine what would happen if it erupted naturally. Nobody knows what damage would be caused, but it definitely wouldn't be good. Mount Fuji is a ticking time bomb. Volcanic mice. Scientists working in the Andes Mountains have made an incredible, albeit tiny, discovery. They found mice who live at the summits of several volcanoes. 
These incredibly hardy mammals thrive in an environment not totally unlike the environment on Mars. Scientists think the miraculous rodents could prove that even on the red planet, complex furry life forms can survive. 20,000 feet above sea level, the dry volcanic summits of the Atacama Plateau are the closest thing on Earth to the Martian surface. Not just because the tops of the volcanoes look like an alien planet, but also because of the thin atmosphere and the bone-cold temperature. Up until this recent discovery, scientists agreed that mammals could not live in such an unwelcoming landscape. But now, Professor Jay Storrs has changed that narrative. At approximately 22,000 feet above sea level, the professor captured a live specimen of a leaf-eared mouse. This was at the top of Yuyayaco, one of the most famous volcanoes in South America. No mammal had ever been found living in such an extreme altitude before, not even the palace's cat I told you about at the beginning of the video. Professor Storch said science as a whole has underestimated the physiological tolerance of mammals. It's true that humans can hardly stand to be at such a high altitude for longer than a handful of hours, but these mice live on the mountaintops full time. Storrs and his team have already found 13 mice at the summits of different volcanoes, all at an elevation of over 18,000 feet. Does this mean there could be tiny mammals living on Mars or Mercury? Most likely not, but it does show just how much scientists don't understand about complex life. It's just like the saying goes, where there's a will, there's a way. The Abandoned Maya Hotel High above the modern Japanese city of Kobe is a ruined and abandoned hotel. Built in 1929, the Maya Hotel is every urban explorer's wildest dream. It was built as an extravagant hotel in the days prior to World War II, when Japan was obsessed with Western Art Deco. It was the kind of place where rich, famous, and high society types would go to stay the night, a sort of resort in the beautiful forest of Mount Maya. But when World War II came, everything changed. During the war, the hotel became a weapon. The roof was equipped with anti-aircraft guns to defend the city of Kobe from attack, though they didn't work, as Kobe was largely destroyed by aerial bombardments. So too was Osaka and Tokyo. Because the hotel was equipped with heavy guns, it was destroyed as a military target. When the dust settled, the Maya Hotel was obliterated. Obliterated, but still salvageable. After the war, the hotel was purchased by a private owner. They repaired the destroyed ruin, and in 1961, the Maya Hotel opened for business once again. For six years, it was a luxury destination on the side of a mountain, overlooking Kobe as it went through rapid industrialization. It too rose from the ashes of war. But the Maya Hotel could not escape its fate. In 1967, its location on the side of a mountain proved troublesome. A mudslide severely damaged the building and it was closed. Then, despite such bad luck, the hotel was repaired again and turned into a student center. It might have been successful if not for the Great Awaji earthquake of 1995. 6,000 people died and the building was destroyed for the final time. These days, the Maya Hotel is a haunting ruin in the forested mountains, occasionally used in music videos and creepy TV episodes. Would you be brave enough to stay a night at the Maya Hotel? Let me know in the comments below. Rip Mountain At the foot of one of the most mythical mountains in Europe, Czech archaeologists recently discovered a Stone Age burial mound. It's one of the oldest ever found in Europe, dating to about 5,800 years ago. Inside the ancient burial chamber were found the remains of a deceased child and some unusual artifacts. The amazing and slightly ghoulish grave was discovered near Rip Mountain. Legend has it that the founder of the Czech people climbed to the top of the mountain. He surveyed the land and decided it was here where he would settle with his tribe of Slavs. The name of this founder was Forefather Czech, which is how the Czech people got their name. There is no proof that this legend has any basis in reality. It first appeared in the 12th century and didn't become a national fable until the end of the 19th century. But it doesn't matter. Rip Mountain is still a national treasure in Czech, standing a humble 1,500 feet above sea level. 
The mountain has also been home to countless groups of people since prehistory. The ancient burial isn't the only prehistoric place around. Archaeologists say there are four other similar sites near the mountain, pointing to a long-lost ritual landscape historians don't fully understand yet. The Shrine in the Alps An incredible shrine from the days of ancient Rome has been found in the Swiss Alps. Archaeologists uncovered about 100 coins that were left as offerings to mysterious gods. But people weren't just leaving coins here in ancient times. Researchers also uncovered nails, shards of crystal, and other bizarre treasures left as gifts to Roman deities. The discovery itself was made on a hot summer day in 2020. An avid hiker was climbing through the Swiss Alps and had reached a plateau. At nearly 10,000 feet above sea level, the hiker spotted something unusual on the ground. It wasn't shiny like you would expect a coin to be. It was dull, horribly rusted, but obviously very old. The hiker picked it up and was shocked to have a real Roman coin in their hand. Thinking ahead, the hiker marked the spot where they found the coin to tell archaeologists later. When researchers were finally able to retrace the hiker's steps and pinpoint the spot, they had a treasure trove on their hands. 59 Roman shoe nails, 27 rock crystals, an old brooch, and a votive plaque. Plus the coins I already mentioned. Rayla Googler, a local archaeologist, said the investigation is still ongoing. But based on the initial findings, Regula said it's clear that this was a holy place on the mountain. People climbed 8,500 feet, which is a lot, just to leave coins and nails at an altar. They must have been asking the deities for favors or for blessings. But which strange gods lived in these mountains 2,000 years ago is unknown. There is one likely suspect, though. In 1926, a mysterious inscription was discovered at a ruined Roman temple in the nearby town of Thun. Written in Latin, the inscription briefly mentioned a mountain goddess. But the goddess doesn't have a name, at least not anymore. Rupak Around the year 800 AD, the Los Atavillos culture emerged in Peru's Lima Valley. The culture likely came from descendants of Lake Titicaca, though their exact origin is mysterious. They started building towns and farming settlements throughout the valley, growing to be the dominant force in the region. One of the greatest places they ever built was Rupak, a stronghold in the mountains. And Rupak is known in the archaeological community as the Machu Picchu of Lima. The forgotten city stands at an incredible altitude, about 10,000 feet above sea level. The ruins of funerary structures and other buildings still survive at the summit of the hill. Archaeological studies have suggested that Rupak was no ordinary city. It was likely a place of cultic worship, where the culture gave praise to their gods and performed complex funerary rituals. Rupak was a city in the sense that people lived in it, but they were more focused on facilitating funerals. Los Atavillos' culture lasted a fairly long time. They thrived atop the mountain for about 670 years. In 1470, they found themselves at the mercy of the Inca conquerors. Rupak was annexed by the Inca, brought into their mighty empire. The site was then totally remodeled, changed from a cultic town into an administrative center. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Little Petra Little Petra is the smaller but no less significant archaeological site in Jordan just north of the normal Petra. Just like its more famous counterpart, Little Petra was a Nabataean site from thousands of years ago. The buildings are carved into the mountain walls in the same fashion as they are at Petra, so that the great buildings blend in perfectly with the sandstone canyons. The only big difference is that Little Petra, as its name suggests, is quite a bit smaller than the other one. The entire site is connected by only about 1,400 feet of canyon, and can be reached pretty easily by walking from the main site of Petra. The city of Petra and the surrounding area was lost to the Western world for hundreds of years. It was once a bustling trade center with very skilled builders, but it was often under attack from jealous societies like the Greeks and the Romans. We know Little Petra was built around the same time as the rest, back in the first century AD. And although archaeologists don't know exactly what all the buildings were used for, they do think the site was a kind of suburb of Petra. It also may have served as an agricultural center and resupply post. 
Whereas Petra was the capital of the Nabataeans, Little Petra could have also been where the ruling elites lived outside the rabble of the main city. Either that, or it was used specifically to house Silk Road traders when they visited Petra. After the Nabataeans declined, were destroyed by Rome, and eventually vanished, Little Petra fell into disrepair and was also abandoned. An earthquake helped finish everything off. For the last 1,500 years or so, it was used by Bedouin nomads for shelter. Only 15% of Petra has been explored, and scientists believe there is plenty more still waiting to be found. The Throne of Agamemnon Some archaeological drama has been unfolding in Greece. It all has to do with an ancient mountain site in Peloponnese, which was once part of the great ancient kingdom of Mycenae. Archaeologist Christophilus Magidis claims that he and his team of experts discovered a giant stone slab that was once part of King Agamemnon's throne. This would place the rock back to around the 13th century BC, to the end of the Mycenaean civilization. These people flourished in the later part of the Bronze Age, and their influence spread throughout Greece, all the way across the Aegean Sea to Crete and the Cycladic Islands. King Agamemnon is one of the most famous figures in Greek mythology. He was the legendary commander of the Greeks during the Trojan War, and is often considered a mythical person. However, archaeological evidence shows that King Agamemnon may have really ruled Mycenae for a time, although it's still unclear what role he played in the Trojan War. So here's the drama. According to the Athens Archaeological Society, Christophilus Magidus didn't discover the king's throne. They said in a recent press conference that the archaeologist's claims are totally unfounded and that there is no evidence whatsoever to back up his supposed discovery. In fact, the society said the giant piece of stone that Christophilus found was probably just part of a household. It likely had nothing to do with the king. So now we are at a weird point where one archaeologist says there is proof of King Agamemnon ruling from the ruins high up in the mountains. Will another group of archaeologists say it's nothing but a scientific diversion to get attention? Nippur The ancient Mesopotamian city of Nippur is one of the greatest mountain cities in the world. It was once the greatest holy city on earth and represented the epicenter for religious teachings in Mesopotamia. It can be found today in southern Iraq and lasted all the way from roughly 5000 BC until the year 800. That's almost 8,000 consecutive years without being abandoned. No easy feat for any city of the world. Nippur was the home of Enlil, the Mesopotamian god who ruled over the air, wind, earth, and storms. One of the reasons Nippur survived such bloody conflict in the early days of Mesopotamia was that it really made itself known as a holy place rather than a political capital. And when it came to wars, both sides were terrified of facing the wrath of the gods, and so no one dared take their army up the mountain to tear down the holy city. Nippur belonged to the civilization of Sumer. The Sumerians ruled most of southern Mesopotamia, and each of their cities was ruled over by its own king. Politics were a significant part of this culture, and they are still considered to be the very first highly advanced civilization to rise up. It comes as no surprise that they were able to make one of the world's first great cities so high in the mountains that it almost touched the sky. But alas, the once great holy city is now a decaying ruin. Even after it survived the violence of the Babylonians, the destruction of the old gods, the rise of Rome, it couldn't survive the rise of Persia. After the Sassanid dynasty came to power around 250 AD, Nippur was left to decay. The Boot in the Himalayas in the year 1970, Italian climber Gunther Messner died on the slopes of Naga Parbat in Pakistan. He was trying to climb to the top of the mountain when he was swept away by a violent avalanche and never seen again. His death on that cold and unforgiving mountain was always assumed but never confirmed. Not until recently, 50 years after his death, when one of his boots was found frozen in a Himalayan glacier. To make this story even more tragic, Gunther had been accompanied by his brother Reinhold, who narrowly escaped the avalanche and wandered for six days through the freezing snow until he was rescued. Reinhold would go on to be the first man to climb Everest without oxygen and had always known that he had cheated death. 
But Reinhold never abandoned the memory of his dead brother. 52 years after Gunther died, his climbing boot was found on Naga Parbat, sitting there on the slope as if it hadn't moved in decades. But sadly, Gunther's whole body wasn't found, only a few pieces of bone nearby. Saint Hilarion Castle Saint Hilarion Castle is one of the most imposing structures in the world. It's an actual castle perched at the very peak of a mountain, looking like something straight out of a fairy tale. It's located in the country of Cyprus, right at the top of the Kyrenia mountain range. From the ruins of this ancient fortification, one can overlook the entire Mediterranean Sea, behold all the land surrounding Cyprus, and look down on the little people moving through the city below like ants. On a clear day, you can even see all the way to Turkey. It's such a mystical place that Walt Disney allegedly used it in his inspiration when making Sleeping Beauty. And guess what? The Crusaders even used this castle almost 1,000 years ago. The history of the mountain castle can be traced back to around the 10th century. It was named after Saint Hilarion, a monk who fled persecution and died somewhere in a cave within the mountain. The Byzantines built a church and monastery on the mountain following his death. Then, shortly after, Saint Hilarion Castle was built as a watchtower. People were posted in the tower to keep a 24-hour lookout for pirates threatening the coast of Cyprus. The castle became strategically important. The nobility began to use it as a summer resort, but by the 15th century it was left a ruin. The Venetians actually dismantled most of the castle just so they wouldn't have to pay for its upkeep anymore. Great Flood Fossils 8,300 feet from sea level, at the very top of a mountain, a man took a video of some rocks. We don't know exactly which mountain this was, but the video was uploaded on TikTok and it showed mysterious rocks with fossils embedded inside of them. The rocks appeared to hold the remains of squid-like creatures, monsters with tentacles that almost looked like aliens. People were quick to label this discovery as proof of the biblical flood. But paleontologists came to the rescue to identify the fossils and explain the situation. It turns out what this guy found at the top of that mountain were actually crinoids, small sea creatures related to starfish. They lived in the Paleozoic era, and so the fossils were between 250 and 500 million years old. According to Natural History Museum curator Tim Ewen, they're called sea lilies, and they were like flowers anchored to the sea floor. Their tentacles were used to catch small food particles floating in the water and bring that food into its mouth, which was located at the base of its arms. Crinoids are still alive today, living over 300 feet deep in the world's oceans. The reason these ancient ones were found on the top of a mountain, over 8,000 feet above sea level, has to do with tectonic plates. Mountains are made when the tectonic plates in the Earth's crust shift, pushing matter upward very slowly until it forms a point and the plates stop moving. When the crinoids were alive, the mountain would have been at the bottom of the sea. The animal died, its fossils settled into the dirt, and then it got pushed up over a span of millions of years until it reached the top of the mountain. Lost Roman Sandal 1,700 years ago, somebody lost their sandal. It was in the 4th century AD, and an ancient traveler was making their way through a challenging mountain pass 6,000 feet above sea level. We don't know where they came from, but perhaps Rome. Whatever the case, they found themselves in western Norway, and for whatever reason, this person lost their sandal as they moved through the snow, and it got stuck in the ice. All these years later, that mysterious sandal has finally been found. If you think your shoes don't last long enough, you're right. This worn leather sandal, which was all the rage in Rome in the 4th century, has survived for almost 2,000 years. It was only revealed because of the unusually warm summer in Norway and was spotted by a random hiker. The hiker was educated enough to realize it had major historical value, and so he photographed the artifact and pinned its location. It was later picked up by archaeologists with a program called Secrets of the Ice, who specialize in glacial discovery. They've already discovered other things in Norway's melting glaciers, from medieval skis to discarded tunics once worn by Viking warriors. Ancient People in the Hills Researchers believe they may have just made the oldest archaeological find on the Indian subcontinent. They came across rock art, 
mysterious engravings, and ancient tools inside caves and rock shelters in the mountainous Mangar Bani region. The caves and shelters were used in the Paleolithic era by primitive humans. Plus, Mangar Bani is part of one of the oldest mountain ranges in the entire world, but was once a great series of towering rock formations stretching all the way from North India down into the West. But since ancient times, the mountains have been blasted away or naturally destroyed, and very few remain. The cave paintings were first discovered in 2021 by a local environmental activist. The activist came across them in a remote part of the forest and couldn't believe their luck. As for the stone tools, they were found in the rock shelters. The tools are extremely basic, made from pebbles and flakes of rock, and they represent the first standardized system of tool making. Putting all these awesome discoveries together, researchers are confident that humans occupied the mountains here for at least 100,000 years, only fleeing about 1,000 years ago. It's now looking like Mangarbani could be one of the biggest Paleolithic sites in the world. Matera Matera has been described by some as the most spectacular city in all of Italy. It's an ancient place filled with mountain grottos and caves carved into the mountainside. Archaeologists have found proof of human habitation in these mountain caves going back to the Paleolithic period, up to 7,000 years ago. They were simple people living in the dark niches and foraging for food. All these years later, many of the caves have been converted into suave hotels and trendy restaurants. The very places where early humans clapped stones together to make fire, rich tourists are now complaining about the slow Wi-Fi. What's really interesting is that Matera is a recent phenomenon. Almost nobody knew about it until 1993, when it was put on the UNESCO World Heritage Site list. And before that, Matera was considered a scourge on Italian society. Up until the 1950s, it was known specifically for poverty, malaria, and infant mortality. People were still living inside the caves with no running water or electricity in the same deplorable conditions as thousands of years earlier. Between 1953 and 1968, about 30,000 people were moved off the mountain and into real physical houses, which were built in a new modern city below. Human Cave Fossils In a dusty mountain cave in South Africa, fossils of ancient human ancestors have been discovered. These fossils are older than anyone could have ever imagined. In fact, the fossils discovered at Stirk Fontein Cave are so old that some scientists can't even believe it. They date back to about 3.6 million years ago, making them even older than the legendary Lucy fossil found in the Ethiopian desert back in 1979. Lucy belonged to a species called Australopithecus afarensis that lived 3.2 million years ago. Preliminary research shows that the fossils found in the South African cave also belong to the genus Australopithecus. However, they may have been a different species. The cave itself is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site Cradle of Humankind. It's considered to be the cradle of all humanity, located in the rocky hills northwest of Johannesburg. The caves in this area have more Australopithecus remains than anywhere else in the world and they predate any other hominin found on Earth by over 1 million years. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! Inca Mummy of the Andes Climbers discovered something gruesome and shocking high in the Andes Mountains of South America. At the top of Mount Yuyayaco, they came across remains of an almost perfectly preserved Inca girl wrapped in a blanket. This discovery was made in Argentina and the preserved girl looked as though she had been frozen just hours before the team of researchers found her. In truth, she had been sitting on top of that mountain for roughly 500 years. She was part of the Inca civilization and was one of three children taken to the peak of the volcano at about 22,000 feet. And there, she and the other two children were drugged with cocaine and alcohol before being placed inside of a small cavern under the ground and left as sacrifice. The deaths of these children were part of an obscure Inca ritual. They were sacrificed for something scientists have only ever been able to speculate on. Nobody has figured out why the kids were taken to such an insanely high spot on the mountain. Normally, in Inca society, the act of child sacrifice was used to commemorate something important. If a great leader died, children needed to be given to the gods. 
if there was a great famine and people were dying, the same thing had to happen. And although this was just another part of Inca society, it wasn't taken lightly. Such a sacrifice could only be made with the direct approval of the Inca emperor. Interestingly, the children chosen for such sacrifices were almost always the sons and daughters of local nobility. The three children found at the summit of Yuyayako are now considered to be among the best preserved mummies on earth. Because of the freezing temperatures at the peak of the mountain, the children have never been able to decay, making them better preserved than almost any mummy ever found. Wyoming Sky Villages The Wind River Range is part of the Rocky Mountains, and it stretches 100 miles across northern Wyoming. It goes all the way from the thick forests of Yellowstone National Park to the sprawling grasslands of the Great Plains. The tallest peaks are about 13,000 feet above sea level and contain a landscape of high-altitude summits and tundra, along with the few remaining glaciers in America from the Ice Age. It's within this mountain range that one of the oldest high-altitude settlements in America can be found. The site is known as High Rise Village, and it's 11,000 feet above sea level, extending out from the side of a hill. It would have made living here a diagonal nightmare, like living on the edge of a ski run. And yet it was a huge settlement occupied by the Shoshone people about 4,000 years ago. They lived here until the end of the 19th century, when Europeans dominated the landscape. The site was discovered in 2006 by Richard Adams with the University of Wyoming. It was the first and biggest of over 20 similar settlements in the Wind River Mountains. About 4,000 years ago, this was a prehistoric landscape. There used to be villages and paths winding through the alpine tundra. Several outposts were also located here, and there was plenty of food for everyone to eat. There was a thriving culture of Native Americans, way above the other groups and safe in the natural defense of the mountains. Ural Mountains Moose There is a massive moose hidden in the Ural Mountains of Siberia. It was discovered in 2011 by a group of researchers led by Alexander Shestakov. It came as a big shock because the moose is a geoglyph, and it looks like something you would expect to find grouped in with the Nazca Lines of Peru. But this was found high in the rural Siberian mountains, an impressive rock geoglyph stretching 900 feet long. Researchers dated the structure as being built sometime between 4000 and 3000 BC. This makes the geoglyph extraordinarily old. At maximum, it was made 6000 years ago and is still visible from the air today. Recent excavations unveiled 155 stone tools near the geoglyph, most of which were likely used for digging up or breaking stones. Stanislav Grigoriev from the Chelyabinsk History and Archaeology Institute says the tools appear to have been used by adults and children. The Neolithic people living in the mountains brought the whole community together to participate in the creation of the moose. Entire families and their tiny children helped dig trenches 30 feet wide, then filled them with stone to create the outline of the moose. Still, the geoglyph is a massive mystery, since nothing like it has ever been found before in the region, and archaeologists don't understand what the purpose of such a gigantic stone creature was. Masada 1,300 feet above the Dead Sea in Israel is an ancient stone fortress. It's sitting atop a rocky mesa, a high-altitude plateau overlooking a vast landscape full of lost history from the days of the Bible. The ancient fortress is called Masada, and it's one of the most important World Heritage Sites in the entire world. Masada's significance has to do with the Jewish people and their Roman enemies. In the 1st century BC, Herod the Great, the king of Judea, built Masada as a castle complex for himself. Then, when the Romans took over several decades later, the fortress became a last stand for the Jewish people. The Romans annexed Judea and built a garrison inside King Herod's fortress. However, then came the Great Revolt of 66 AD. A group of angry Jewish people, tired of being subjugated, stormed Masada and took over the mountain complex. Unfortunately, the rebels were outnumbered by the Romans. The leader named Menahem was murdered and Jerusalem was destroyed. The few rebels still alive at Masada were then hunted down by the Romans. The 960 surviving rebels were soon under siege by a legion of 8,000 Romans. After several months stuck inside the castle, the Jewish rebels had no hope of escaping. 
When it became clear they were about to meet their fate at the hands of the Romans, they flung themselves off the side of the mountain to prevent the massacre. Masada was then abandoned and was turned into a monastery. In the 7th century, the fortress was deserted again, and the site wasn't rediscovered by archaeologists until 1828. Lot's Monastery In the Bible, God agreed that he would spare the people of Sodom from destruction if he could only find a few decent human beings among the sinners. But this was a difficult task, and the only good-natured souls he found were those of Lot and his family. And so God destroyed the city of Sodom and all the sinners inside with a great fiery blast. After the destruction of Sodom, Lot and his family fled and sought shelter in a mountain cave. The exact cave in which the biblical family took refuge can be found today near the Dead Sea in Jordan, close to the modern town of Safi. This is where archaeology and the Bible come together. Archaeologists have discovered evidence of human habitation around the cave dating to the 1st century BC. This suggests that during the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was a primitive Bronze Age presence here. Then, in the 5th century, a monastery was built within the cave to honor Lot and his family. The only thing missing is evidence that Lot himself lived in the cave. All we've really been able to discover is that some people lived nearby and that Lot's secret cave was a sacred place of worship for the Christians and the Muslims until at least the end of the 9th century. It was around then that the monastery was abandoned. Elora Mountain Caves The Elora Mountain Caves, also known as Elura, is a sacred site in India dating back to about 1500 years ago. The caves are all part of one major archaeological site, but they are spread out within the Sadyadri Hills. There are a total of 35 caves, each one filled with spectacular monuments to either Hinduism, Buddhism, or Jainism. Elura is one of the most impressive rock-cut architectural wonders in India. Most of the caves are natural, but many have been widened and improved upon to make them more impressive. The most spectacular thing about them is that they contain various statues and decorations. The earliest cave, which dates back to the 6th century AD, celebrates Hinduism and is known as the Hindu Ramasvara. It's loaded with vestibules and high-relief friezes and great carvings showing scenes from the Hindu sacred text called the Puranas. Another cave has spectacular carvings of river goddesses on its exterior with a massive dancing Shiva inside, along with an image of the buffalo demon king. We can also see in these mountain caves how religion changed throughout the centuries in ancient India. Most of the carvings are decorated in Hindu reliefs starting in the 6th century. However, there are Buddhist caves that appear in the 7th and 8th centuries. These caves have figures of Buddha instead of the mythological figures from Hinduism. The preferred religion of the area depended on who the king was at the time, and so it was frequently switched back and forth. Monte Alban Monte Alban is one of the biggest ceremonial sites found anywhere in Mesoamerica. It's only exceeded in size by Teotihuacan, which is located near Mexico City. This is quite impressive considering the sheer number of ritual hubs found throughout the old kingdoms of the Toltec, Maya, Aztec, and Olmec. The mysterious mountain ruins here contain some of the oldest writing in all of Mexico. There are strange rock engravings called danzantes that show humanoid beings with weird features. Between the bizarre carvings and the almost hieroglyphic script, some have suggested the people of Monte Alban had contact with a culture from the other side of the world. What we do know based on archaeological excavations is that the original buildings of Monte Alban were built around 1000 BC. However, it's unclear who exactly built them. This is because about 900 years later, the Zapotec showed up and destroyed the original buildings, constructing their own structures on top of them. The astronomical observatories and huge pyramids standing at Monte Alban today are the newest features of the site built over the ruins of even older buildings. Termesos Solimius was an Anatolian god worshipped in ancient Turkey. He was later identified with the Greek god Zeus and was worshipped by the cult of Zeus Solimeos. This was typical in many parts of the ancient world. One deity would become popular in a place far from its original home and it would be merged with the local gods to create a kind of super god. This god is associated with the city of Termesos. It was built and inhabited by a group called the Solimi, 
who derived their name from the god Solimaeus. These people, little more than a small tribe in ancient history, built this city around 2,000 years ago in the Taurus mountain range. Sadly, this is all we know about the ancient tribe and their city. The only historical account we have comes from the Anabas of Alexander, written by Arian of Nicomedia while Alexander the Great was still alive. In the ancient text, it says that Alexander surrounded the mountain city of Termesos in 333 BC, but he failed to capture it. Alexander said the city was like an eagle's nest, sheltered in the mountains and impossible to take for himself. The conqueror eventually left the city to its own devices, and in 71 BC, the people of Termesos became allies of Rome. Its population reached a maximum of about 150,000 residents, but by the 5th century AD, the whole place was abandoned. Its position in the mountains proved unwise, as the whole city was brought to ruin by an earthquake. The Hall of Records There is a place in the United States that looks like something you would expect to find in the mountains of old Persia. It's called the Hall of Records, and it's located at Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Carved in stone behind the head of President Abraham Lincoln is a massive chamber which contains all the history of America up until the presidency of Teddy Roosevelt. While this isn't an ancient archaeological site, it most certainly will be in the future. If the American civilization ever collapses and Mount Rushmore falls to pieces, this vault will be discovered thousands of years from now. People in the future will uncover a mysterious time capsule within a 70-foot cavern blasted out of the mountainside using dynamite in 1938. Oddly enough, shortly into the project, the mastermind behind it, Gutzon Borglum, died unexpectedly. His plan was to create a deep vault holding a copy of everything from the Declaration of Independence to the Constitution, with the vault accessible by a huge staircase winding up the mountain. However, after he died in 1941, the government decided it wasn't worth it to preserve history for the future. They didn't want to spend the money, so they abandoned the project. It wasn't until 1998 that 16 porcelain panels were sealed inside of a titanium vault within the Hall of Records. The vault was then covered by a granite slab and sealed for eternity. The Hall of Records is closed to the public, but it will be an incredible discovery for people in the future who stumble upon it. St. Hilarion Castle St. Hilarion Castle is the ancient mountain fortress that Walt Disney supposedly used as inspiration for the castle in the Disney classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This ancient building is positioned on the top of a mountain overlooking the city of Gurney in Cyprus. While the castle is little more than a decrepit ruin these days, with its towers crumbling and its roof long since collapsed, it isn't hard to see where Disney got his inspiration from. Long ago, this place really was a fairy tale castle. St. Hilarion Castle gets its name from a hermit who supposedly fled to the top of the mountain following the Arab conquest of the Holy Land. Legend has it there was originally a monastery here that was built in his honor, but no archaeological evidence of such a thing has ever been found. The castle itself was likely built between the 10th and 11th century by the Byzantine Empire, and then was used as a fortress during the Crusades. Cyprus was one of the most crucial strategic military outposts throughout the Crusades because of its convenient location in the Mediterranean Sea. The fortress was built to command the road leading from Kyrenia to Nicosia. It was first used as a defense against Arabian pirates, but then it became a summer residence for French royalty before being abandoned and dismantled in the 15th century. Thanks for watching! Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time for more videos like these. Bye!